Hello, hello. Happy Monday. Uh, I hope everyone's weekend uh, went pretty well. Um, I definitely had an eventful weekend, and, uh, well, I'm glad to be back with you guys. Um, been uh, very crazy. There's a lot of things coming up in the past that have been really interesting. I mean, the New York City Marathon was yesterday. Um, I always love to check it out um, because they pass by Fifth Avenue, uh, where, I, uh, where I live, for the home stretch. Uh, in Harlem, so it's always really, really great to see that. And uh, I actually had ambitions of running it uh, this year, but um, I didn't do quite enough training uh, during the summer. I did a little bit. I ran, I started getting the groove running like eight to ten miles, but well, we all know the New York City Marathon is twice that, uh, more, well, more than twice that, so uh, maybe three times that. I, I don't know. It's not, needless to say, it's a pretty crazy event, so uh, you really need proper training, and, uh, well, there's always next year. Um, also, uh, uh, the U.S. elections are tomorrow. Uh, we're finally here, finally in the home stretch. Um, I think everyone is sort of keen on them being over, uh, but it's going to be a big day. It's going to be a, a really, really big day, and uh, without um, without leaking partisanship all over the place, uh, I'll, I'll just say that, um, that they're really... Uh, I mean, it's probably the most important or consequential election of my lifetime, at least. So um, I'm definitely going to be voting, no doubt about that. Um, also, we have the Carlson Karyakin World Championship match, and um, very much looking forward to that. I actually wonder, though, if it might be overshadowed by all the other events going on, like the these elections and uh, and just the craziness of the world right now. Um, I hope that uh, that being in New York, it does take take up a spotlight for for uh, the few weeks. And um, yeah, I'm definitely going to be engaged. Uh, stay tuned. I might do some video analysis of some of the games and things of that nature. Um, so uh, uh, in case you're wondering, I'll also be there on Saturday. Um, so if you're in New York City, come check come check me on Saturday. Definitely going to be there. I have only, I only have two tickets for the match, but um, I'm definitely going to be trying to uh, to be there more than two days if I'm fortunate enough to get a few more tickets. So uh, I'm going to try and finagle my way into some some more opportunities to just be present and visible during the match. Um, and yeah, anyways, enough talking. Let's play Blitz. Um, I. Uh, Put my name on the hat in the hat for the queue, and so now we'll be waiting on that. Um, yeah, just been a really, really crazy time to be alive. I think uh, amazing. Um, what else has been going on? Well, oh, the Warriors lost another basketball game. Um, that's I mean, people were saying like, ah, oh, they're gonna. They're gonna beat the seventh, seventy-three and nine record of last year, but they're they really do lack depth now, and their defense is awful. Um, and they lost to the Lakers, so yeah. Anyways, we're playing a Norwegian, I think. Eric G. Okay, so E4. I mean, this place is silly. Let's just get out the gate, start playing aggressive, and go for a knight or if if it's allowed. Let's see, three A6, Bishop C4. Ooh, Fisher Sosa, not something you see every day. Um, I'm just going to try and get this bishop on b3 as quickly as possible, although bishop takes e6 is quite popular, it's sacrifice. Ooh, bishop d5, very interesting, very, very interesting. Hmm. I'm going to chicken out and not accept the sacrifice, because I think it's a little bit too scary for me. Um, but now white will definitely have the advantage after bishop takes b7. Wow, this guy is really, really going for it. Wow, I did not see this coming at all. b4 is super strong, because now my knight has to move, but then I lose the bishop, so I might be in a little bit of trouble here, actually. I'm gonna take on uh, on d5 and uh, and hope for the best. Wow, 
Wow, this is a really, really shocking development. I was hit with this bolt from the blue, this B4 move, which I really, quite honestly, was not on my radar whatsoever. So, really good, impressive stuff from uh, from this guy, whoever he is, uh, Eric G. Uh, I definitely need to <laughs> refresh my Fisher Sozin knowledge. Um, B4s, wow, Bishop D5 and B4s, really impressive stuff. Um... But you know what? The game's not over, so we fight. So how do I get out of this? How do I get out of this mess? I'm gonna attack this uh, this queen. If somehow I can get the d5 pawn, that would be a really really nice. So I'm gonna try and dislodge this queen from defending d5, and then hopefully I can take it if I get the opportunity. But tough to say if I will get that opportunity. But um. Also, when you're in trouble, like I am, this position I'm sure is probably losing. It's very important that you play quickly. So I'm also going. That's also going to be like my side hustle here is to play quickly if I can. Um, and now, if I get another move, I want to go queen a5. Um, if allowed. But now knight f5 is a really, really nasty move as well. It's a this this b4 bishop d5 and b4 is very impressive. Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely have to look at that. Um, but anyways, let me stop dwelling. It's the game is not over yet, even though it does feel that way. Um, okay, so he's doing some thinking, which is always a good sign. So knight f5, I sort of expected that, and yeah, it's an annoying move. This knight is very strong on f5. I mean, I could go bishop f8, but my bishop is so passive anyway, so I think I'm just going to attack this knight and try to trade my bishop on e7 for this knight on f5. Um, and, like I said, if I can somehow get this d5 pawn, um, I think I could fight, I could manage to fight a little bit longer, but that's going to be very difficult. Yep, I expected this. I expected uh, uh, this uh, bishop g5 move. And, hmm. And I'm going to go queen e8. The idea is just sort of to take the e file. Um, uh, because I think that's sort of an important thing right now to control the one the 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 e file the open file. Because if this a1 rook gets into the game with this protected pass pawn c6, it's over. And it and to be honest, it is already an overwhelming position. But if that happens, it's definitely over. And now I'm actually threatening queen e5, which is uh, sort of nice. Uh, just hit a double attack against the rook on a1 and the bishop on g5. So I think that's what uh, my uh, my opponent is thinking about. Um, and, uh, yeah, there are a few, there's, there are some moves here that I think are pretty good. Just moving the rook probably works. Knight b6 might work. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's still, it's, it's a tough position for me, no doubt. But if I can get queen e5 in, hmm. Queen takes b4 is a little bit surprising, because I thought I could play knight takes d5. Can I go knight takes d5? Nope, then I get, I, I think I get ousted in a losing endgame. Knight takes d5, bishop takes d7, and bishop takes d6. Doesn't look good enough. Um, Wow, this knight b6 is really, really nasty threat. I'm gonna go h6. It doesn't. It's not a great move, but yeah.
Yeah, rookie one. Good move. Good move. I'm going to go knight takes d5. I know it's losing, but um, not much great choices here. So, yep. Knight takes d5 is probably the, a losing move, but uh, it's my last try in a position that's already pretty, uh, pretty difficult to save, honestly. I think if bishop takes e a7, knight takes b uh, b4, and then knight b6 should be winning. Um, I'm going to have one last ditch, ditch attempt when I play uh, bishop f5 to hold the square, the c8 square, but again, should be winning. Mm-hmm. Rookie eight, just, uh, just basically this pin, just trying to pin, uh, the, the bishop. And I expect knight b6 to be played. To which I'll reply knight, uh, to which I'll, I'll pro I don't know, maybe I'll reply knight takes c2. Now I'll reply bishop f5, just holding the c8 square. And, um, yeah. I might have a... A sliver of a chance now with knight d5, which uh, threatens uh, knight takes c7. Um, and I think he missed it. Wow, knight d5, at rook, b, rook b1's a blunder because if rook b8 was the idea, I have, I'm hitting the bishop on e7. So I've breathed new life into the position. Um, and now I have knight takes c7, and believe it or not, I'm only down a pawn. Uh, which is a really, really welcome development, obviously, after... Uh, all I've been through with this game. Um, all right, so now I shouldn't lose. I'm, I've uh, I've fought so hard to get back into this. I gotta I gotta try and make it a little bit complicated. Uh, uh, Trading is definitely not what you want to do when you're down the way I am, but uh, the rook was infiltrating too quickly, and now I think I, I might have the opportunity to to take my time here. And that's a repetition. I could have probably flagged him if I made some other moves, but... I sort of, that would have been a little bit in poor taste, and, uh, well, I'm happy to draw, um, considering where the game was. Um, now, I just want to take a look at that bolt from the blue, because it, it probably is just a common move that I just don't know about in the Fisher Shells. And I've seen sacrifice with knight, with, I've seen this bishop d5 idea once or twice, but usually in different lines. So, let me just take a look here. After bishop c4, e6, this is the Fisher Sozen. B5, bishop B3, knight B7, rook E1, knight C5. Okay, so knight C5 is just a massive blunder because it's giving plus one for bishop D5. Okay, so I should start with bishop B7. That's what uh, the engines are uh, are telling me. But um, really, really incredible move, uh, the bishop D5, to punish punish your opponent in this way. And uh, yeah, it's rare that you have this sort of I mean, it, we're not, it's move 10, you know? It's rare that you have this sort of uh, idea this early in the game. So kudos to Eric G. Um, anyways, new game. All right, postmortem. Hopefully uh, the postmortem will be more positive for me this game. So d4, knight of 6, knight of 3. Um, knight of 3 is sort of a, a nice move to make against knight f6, move 2, because it avoids a lot of the gambit. So if you're someone that is wary of gambits than um, like Alban counter gambit or Budapest gambit. I mean, all gambits can be remedied against, but um, it's just good to have that in mind. Now this guy's playing a Grunfeld, and this line has actually become quite popular uh, against Bishop G5 
The point is you give up uh, one of the pawn. Um, you give up a pawn uh, for like a pretty good initiative. And uh, well, I'm gonna accept. I'm gonna accept the pawn sacrifice um, and sort of just try to hold on to the pawn. But uh, it has a pretty sterling re reputation. Uh, so I doubt I'll get anything too too serious in this line. In fact, I think I might have just made a pretty bad blunder playing knight d4, because now there's going to be a lot, a lot of pressure on my d4 knight. So now actually black might have a, a slight advantage. Um, my bad. Um, this is not. Now I'm just giving up the two bishops, and black will gladly take the two bishops with annoying pressure on uh, my, uh, my position. So... Knight d4 was a bit of a mistake on my part. It was not a bit, a bit of a mistake, it was a huge mistake. And uh, now I'm sort of fighting for, fighting to save equality again. So, um, yeah, the rust is showing. The, the weekend rust is showing, for sure. Um, hmm. But you know what, I see a free pawn on b7, and I'm going to grab that free pawn on b7. Um, I think... Uh, I think I need it, to be quite frank, um, because my position has nothing to be... There are no merits to my position otherwise, so, um, yeah. And bishop c4, I had missed, but I'm hoping that knight e4 does the trick. The idea is that i attacking the c5 queen, and also the bishop on c4 is pinned, so... Um, I think, uh, I think this was probably missed by post-mortem. The good news is, even when I get awful positions, uh, because it's blitz, you have the opportunity to fight on, and, um, that's what I'm doing. I'm just fighting on, and, uh, yeah, I think there's, a, a good chance I might hold. Queen c4 is a good move, because it protects the, uh, it makes sure the queen's protected and the f1 rook is still hit, so... Pretty much I'm going to lose an exchange, I think, either way. Um, because there's bishop takes b2 and bishop takes f1. And the question is, which is, which is, which wouldn't I, which would I mind losing less? Um, so that's going to be a tough question for me. Which exchange is less important? Uh, I really, if I could, I'd love to get the bishop on d4. I think that's a more valuable, um, exchange, so I'm going to go rook d1, and the idea is that if bishop takes b2, I may have like queen h6, or something like that, and essentially I'm saying I'd rather, if I'm going to lose the exchange, I'd rather get the dark squared bishop rather than the light squared bishop, so that's basically my motive, um, yeah, so bishop takes b2, Hmm. No queen h6. And now I think it would actually be smarter if black um, if black kept kept the bishops. Uh, yeah, by playing bishop g7, I think that's a very very smart move. Um, very very good decision making. Um, so. Because this bishop on g7 is so strong. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to go queen h4. And the idea is that I'm still hit, uh, my queen is still eyeing the h7 square. It's also now eyeing the c4 bishop. So knight f6 check might come with discovery at some point. And those things are pretty important. So. Um, so I think all is all is okay. So rook takes d1, rook takes d1, um, and yeah, I'm i still I'm still significantly worse, but um, and a2 pawn is hanging, but again, my position was probably even worse a, a little while back. So these are these are 
not not the end of the world. Um, hmm. Yeah, and I'm gonna just try. I'm gonna get this. Uh, I'm gonna ch just get this dark squared bishop because I think it's too important. Now I'm probably this is probably losing, but it's a it's a good chance to fight because um, I'm just a pawn down and uh, well, hopefully I can put some pressure. Uh, by, by sort of using my H-pawn as a battering ram now. And this is annoying, because now H5 is coming, and then H6, and um, I think G takes H5. I mean, it's not a move that you want to make, um, so... I think I will. I think I will hold this position, um, as scary as it as it looks. Like Queen C two doesn't worry me because I'll just play King G two and protect. Um, protect the um, the F two pawn, and then okay, Queen D two. Eh. Should I be worried? I don't know. I'm going to attack this a7 pawn because uh, if I get that pawn, it's just, I'm, I sort of solved my problem, so. And bishop h3 check was threatened, so that's why, that's why I took on g6. And now the material is equal, I think, uh, I think it, I, I have no worries now, um, but because I'm, at least the stronger player by raiding, I'm going to try and press press a non-existent advantage. Um, and I'm going to blunder a pawn trying to press the non-existent advantage. Definitely not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Man, this has been a bad, 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 bad start. The good news is uh, I understand pawn endgames a little bit, and uh, I think I'm going to hold the draw anyway. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to have two draws to start the stream. Ugh, I hate draws. This is absurd. But uh, here we are with another draw that I think post-mortem will take right now. Yeah. Or I will take for post-mortem. So, yeah, disappointing, uh, disappointing start, really. Um, definitely should be better than this, but, you know, sometimes, uh, happens. Anyways, let's try and get a W on the board. Um, Two draws. Ugh, I hate, hate draws. That's the one thing I'm a little bit concerned about with this match, is if if one guy gets a win in this Carlson Karyakin match, let's say let's say Karyakin gets a win, he's going to just play for the draw for the rest of the games. He he is not gonna win this match. If you if Karyakin somehow wins the match, it's not gonna be because um because he won a ton of games. It's gonna be because he didn't lose. So, uh, or he didn't lose a ton of games. So that's really the issue I think everyone on everyone's mind is, man, we hope for this interesting match. And same thing for Car Carlson. I mean, he, he might just try to bog down if he gets a win as well. Anyways, this is a Karakon advance. My bishop is a threatened to be trapped here, so I got to save it. I always wrestle with whether to go h6 or h5 in these types of positions to save the bishop. Um... I think h6 is a little bit more responsible, but I'm going to go h5 because I'm not in a responsible mood. Um, so, uh, 
Yeah. It, it Six is definitely more responsible. <laughs> um, but what the, what the heck? I, I think now I'm just going to try and... Uh, I basically sacrificed the H pawn uh, for, for little to no compensation, really. But um, yeah. I think I might have some pressure on the D4 pawn. So that's sort of my motivation. Um, it's sort of like an advanced... It's sort of like this. I mean, it's honestly like sort of like an advanced French, except my my light square bishop is outside of the chain and I play this h5 move. In bishop g5, I'm actually happy to see because now, excuse me, now I have queen b6, and now I'm putting pressure on the b2 pawn. So um, now I think I should be okay. I, I was a little bit worried, but now I now I feel all right. Unless unless maybe knight a3 is uh, is a little bit of a makes the b2 pawn a bit poison, because if knight a3 is played, there is the potentiality of for queen takes b2, uh, and then like knight b5, and my queen could be trapped, so. And now it's the question, is, is, the, is the b2 pawn just poisoned? Um, and maybe it is, but the d4 pawn isn't, so I'm going to play c takes d4. Okay, bishop takes h5, expected that, or I didn't expect it, but... That's a welcome ex uh, welcome move, so I just trade these bishops, and I think white is a tad bit overextended, um, because now if I go queen takes b2, the rook is hanging, so I'm going to do that, and then knight d2, okay, and now I was thinking I have d takes c3. And the point is, if rook b1 here, I actually have c2 forking the queen on d1 and the rook on b1. So I'm getting really, really greedy, but it's sort of based on this idea that maybe this queen on d1 is a bit overextended. And so to continue that idea, I'm going to go c2. And the point is that the queen has to defend, has to stay defending the knight on h5. And as long as it has to do that, wow, okay. White just didn't defend the knight h5, and now I think I can just take this knight. And uh, I think all is okay now, because now I'm up a piece. Yeah, I'm down def behind development, but I am up a piece, so. Hmm. Queen b5 is a little bit annoying, though. I didn't see this move. The point is that my... Uh, My b7 pawn is a little bit loose here. And it's not so easy to defend. I'm wondering if I can play rook takes g5 and then knight e7. But I'm going to go rook b8 and stay super passive. Hmm. My idea is to play rook takes g5 and knight, knight g7 uh, at the right moment. Because this bishop on g5 is, is proving to be a bit more of a menace than I would have, would, I have liked, would have liked it to be. Ah, and I just blundered my bishop. Ugh. I'm not playing well today at all. Wow, that was an awful move. Ugh, man. Ah, oh, that's such a bad move. Well, I gotta go queen c3 now. Wow, that's just... Ugh. I'm really disgusted with myself because I'm just blundering left and right. And, uh... It shows. Now, all is not lost. I do have a few pawns for the piece, but um, hardly uh, hardly how you want to draw it up. So um, I'm hoping that the C2 pawn now will be some sort of asset for me to, um, to keep this game going um, longer than a few more moves. Um...
now now my idea is maybe to tuck my king on f7 and uh, and pray. <laughs> Um, and also, I do have a threat. Knight d4 is a threat. So if, uh, hmm. so if I go queen one check, and then knight d4, I think that might do something. Queen one check, knight d4. Hmm. So queen e1, knight d4, now this fork is, is a bit annoying, and, um, ah, okay, queen c5 is a very good move, though. Yeah, I had, to, I more or less had to go knight e c6 here, because... My b8 rook was hit, being hit, and my knight mt4 is being hit. So, sort of uh, a tricky, uh, a tricky situation to be in. Now I'm hoping that if queen take, if knight takes b8 is played, I have uh, knight takes c2 and queen e5 check, or some combination of those moves. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a tough situation to be in. Okay, but the rook was moved, so I do get the opportunity to. to to do something else, and um, I'm gonna go b6. The idea is to hit the queen on c5 and protect the b. And uh, now the b7 pawn is protected after I move my rook. And this knight on d7, which has been a little bit of an asset, is is sort of close to getting trapped, um, which is another which is a welcome development, because um, the knight doesn't really have any squares now, and now it's actually pinned. So. So knight d7, okay, that's not such a big deal. I think I can go king g8, um, and uh, I step out of the discovery checks. And um, okay, bishop e7, interesting, but is it decisive? I don't think so. I think I can go rook takes d7, and then if queen takes d7, queen e5 check. And the point is now that this knight, this now this rook on b2 is feeling a little bit loose, so I might have some discovery plays and there. So first I'm going to go knight takes e7 to get rid of this pesky bishop, and now I think knight e2 would just secure um, would secure the rook on b2. I I would maybe perhaps be allowing a perpetual, but maybe not the end of the world considering where I came from. And now we're in the rough and tumble of time trouble, so I'm going to move sort of quickly. But it looks like my opponent might be forcing a draw. Although I'm a, I was a little bit... I think this queen trade move was very strange. Because now I think I have a winning pawn ending. Which I screw up because I'm in time trouble. Is that three draws in a row? I, I don't think this has ever happened. I really don't. Um, <laughs> wow, 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 wow. In Blitz, you know, it's also like if you have all these draws, you know it's a product of a lot of mistakes on both sides. That's a, the other funny thing. Um, but man, I just, I can't, I can't deal with these draws. Anyways, let's see what happens. So there's a Karakon, Karakon Advance. And knight e2, knight g3 is not the most popular way, um, but it is an interesting way to play because it's sort of attacking the, the light squared bishop right away, trying to get the bishop pair. And um, after h4, I think I should have played h6, but I was a bit eager, and um, and as I said during the game, um, I, 
you know, H5 is just in the mood for it. And uh, I had some compensation for playing this H5 move uh, by suggesting that if you go for this uh, flank pawn, I'm going to sort of get an initiative going in the center before you're ready. So that's sort of what I was trying to do with c5 and knight c6, trying to put pressure on the d4 pawn before before white was ready. But I didn't have a massive, but white did have a massive lead in development, and um, and I just sort of ignored that. And ultimately, it looks like this queen takes b2 move was okay, but I didn't I didn't do enough uh, from a material standpoint and else else uh, and otherwise to sort of just get out of trouble, and I can say very confidently that in this position, I, w I think I'm pretty much okay, I think, but I, I mixed up the moves. I played bishop h3, but I think I should have played rook takes g5 first, and then bishop a3, and I think most, and I think I would have had a winning position, because I have this really strong pawn on c2, and I would have had two, p uh, I would have had a great compensation for the exchange uh, with a healthy pawn structure, and um, yeah, uh, but it happens like that sometimes, but we cannot end with just draws, so th hopefully this next game will be the game that changes everything, and a German is going to be on the receiving end of a smackdown. D4, knight of six, knight of three, and I'm going to win this game, no doubt about it in my mind. I'm going all out. Now, you might say, what does all out mean? Well, for me, it just means uh, uh, slow, grind it out, chess. Uh, so perhaps not the all out that everyone else is talking about. I should have played queen e2 in this structure um, to stop this bishop a6 move. That was a mistake on my part, and I hope I'm not punished for it. Um, but otherwise, things are going okay. Um, uh, uh, um. I'm essentially putting a, a great deal of pressure on Black's queenside structure, and so this is what I'm, yeah, this is what I was angling for, because now I have an open file. Um, so uh, I think I should be okay here. Um, and I like this queen b5 move, because I really didn't want Black to be able to play b5. I mean, Black has a probably probably has a quite solid position here, but uh, I'm very good with my minor pieces, so that's what I'm going to try and show here. Um, I'm just going to try and maneuver around until Black makes a fatal mistake, because usually they do make these types of mistakes. So Bishop f4. It's the first decision Black has to make. I think that's a little bit critical. I think Rook b7 is an important move to make. Um, the point is, uh, you want to keep this rook on the b-files that you're still threatening before. Wow, correct. And now I'm going to go rook a8 check, just to force that king to h7. Um, uh, but then my idea is, after if king h7 is played, I want to go knight e5. Bishop f8 is played. That's a bit surprising, because... Now b4 isn't a threat because I could just go knight takes b4. So now I'm going to go rook e a1 because b4 isn't a threat. So I don't have to move prophylactically to defend against it. Um, okay, g5 I didn't expect. Where should I go with my bishop? Tough to say. I'm going to go bishop e1. I mean bishop d2. And, hmm. Man, I would love to double these bishops somehow. Or double these rooks somehow on the on the back rank, on the on the eighth rank, but not does not look possible. This b4 move is looming over my position, and it looks really uncomfortable, so I, I'm hoping that I can uh, sort of stop that idea to some extent. 
Um, but tough to say. And the knight was going to e4, so I had to stop it by playing f3. And uh, I want to say that I'm okay here, but I, I'm not so sure I have a, an advantage. I, I, I was thinking before I might have an advantage, because the further the game goes, and my as long as my rook on a8 is active, this b5 pawn might be weak. So if I could somehow bring my king to d3 and then put and then exert some pressure, that would be good. Knight h5, though, is a very interesting move, though, putting uh, putting some real pressure on my um, my uh, my queen my kingside pawns, maybe with uh, yeah knight g3 or maybe knight f4. I don't see anything yet that scares me, so I'm just gonna move my king further towards the center. Hmm. Knight h4 is a threat, so now I'm playing bishop e1 to stop that. And I must say, uh, my, um, and this cowboy, cowboy stifle is, uh, playing fast and well. But fast is the key thing. Fast is, you don't want to see fast, honestly, in this, cl in this climate. This climate where I'm really, really gunning to win fast is, you do not want to see someone that's playing super fast. And that's what I'm seeing, so... Uh, really impressive on uh, on this cowboy's part to do that. Knight b4 might have been a little bit of a mistake. I really want to try and attack this b5 pawn, but maybe I should have started with knight a3. I'm gonna. Should I go? I want to. I almost want to go back and admit my mistake, but I'm too stubborn for that. So I'm gonna go knight c6. Um, and of course I'm just blundering the g2 pawn because that's just what I've been doing today. But uh, but I might get pressure quickly on this b5 pawn. So I'm hoping that uh, that my mistake won't be decisive. And yes, now I think I'm going to get b5. Finally, finally, finally. Which is good. Um, and now i got to run those pawns. So uh, so yes, I'm going to go b3 and then c4 and just push, push, push. And it's important not to blunder my f3 pawn. So I'm just going to keep going and uh, hope for the best c5, c6, c7. And it appears I'm going to win a piece now, finally, as a testament to my hard work of pushing pawns. And now I'm curious, if I trade these... Uh, If I trade these bishops, it might be a little bit tricky to win the knight versus the four pawns that are split. So I'm going to keep the bishops on the board and attack the pawns from behind. Sometimes that's a good way to go, uh, to keep the minor pieces on the board and just try to win one pawn in the meantime. Although my bishop on h6 is trapped, which was not what the objective was uh, when I went in for this. Hmm. Once again, not looking the way I wanted it to look. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable, really. We might have a f another draw. So bishop... Okay, so king takes g5. I have to be careful not to lose this now. 
Well, I guess I have to go knight takes c6. And then knight f4 looks natural. Um, knight d5 also looks natural. And uh, f4 also looks natural. Scary, very scary. And wow, I've managed to actually lose this one. Unbelievable. Really unbelievable. Now the good move news for me, yes, Queen A1 was the only move, because any other move would have basically lost the game. And this is actually a pretty important technique that uh, my opponent is employing here. Uh, I'm just playing it out just for the example. Um, it's like the staircase technique. Yeah. Whew. Tough day. Tough, tough day. I will point out, though, this in this particular position, um, Queen A1 is the only winning move. Because if you have an F7, if you have an F pawn or an H pawn, or C pawn or an A pawn on the seventh rank, uh, you can actually uh, win the game. Uh, because the king will actually always have these stalemating tricks. So basically what that means is if you play pawn f7 here, if, if f pawn f7 here is played, whenever the queen actually attacks that pawn, it can't actually capture it if the king is on h8 because it's stalemate. So queen a1 prevents the pawn from going to f7 because of this pin, and that has a decisive outcome. Um, so impressive technique, um, uh, sort of like a, sort of one of those tricks that everyone, uh, every end game or Really, every player should know um, just uh, when it gets down to this sort of thing. So, good job. Um, I just I can't I can't leave end the stream without a without one win. Can I just one? Even on an off day, I uh, I do sort of uh, expect to get one. So um, I was so confident there against this cowboy guy that. Uh, Maybe uh, my confidence uh, turned us to something else, a little bit of arrogance. So uh, hopefully um, that changes. Um, hmm. I guess another thing while we're waiting on the queue is that I really shouldn't, in this position, I should not have allowed this bishop a6 move. Because my bishop on d3 is so active and it's sort of an integral part of any kingside attacking chance I had. So, anyways, new game, e4. I'm going for Sicilian. I want to win, win, right? So I have to show why I want to win, and that's Sicilian. So we have an anti-Sicilian on the board, uh, or, or a close Sicilian, um, which shouldn't trouble me too much. I The close Sicilian I never really thought was such a big deal because you basically give up control of the d4 square right away, which is not something you usually want to be doing. Um, so, I don't mind. I never really minded um, these types of setups. But what do I know? Knight c4 is a little bit strange, because I get b5 with tempo, but knight d5 might be a little bit annoying, so I, and I think that's what he's aiming for. Yeah, 
E5 is definitely an interesting pawn break. But I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's, I just don't think it was the best way to go. I'm going to go rook fd8 and just put pressure on this backward, um, backward d-pawn. So I'm going to try and go bishop e8 next. And, um, knight takes d7 is a move, but I wasn't so worried about it because I thought I'd have sufficient pr pressure on the backward d-pawn for the two bishops. But, given that my Russian opponent didn't take it, I'm not going to give him a second chance. So d4 has now been accomplished. But again, I'm not so sure, because now I'm, maybe you can go knight d5, and uh, hit, just hitting this this uh, this bishop on e3 is, I think, a good thing. And giving it to me for free is even better. Um, You might say, why are you trading all these pieces? And it's, well, because I think the trades help me. I think they allow me to put more pressure on on Black's, on White's uh, position. So I think, especially with the, having the two bishops, I think some of these trades put me in a prime position to target the d4 pawn and maybe the a2 pawn at a later juncture. So I welcome those trades to sort of clarify uh, the position in the center. Um... And no, I don't think I have something, some serious advantage or anything, but I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's insignificant. So, sort of the diplomatic way of putting it. And, um, hmm. go bishop a4. Just putting a little bit more pressure on the d1 rook. Because now you have a choice to make, because if you go, if you move the rook on the d file, then, like if rook d2 is played, bishop takes e5 wins a piece. Uh... If rook d3, if, if rook d3 is played, um, after bishop it takes e5, d takes e5, I might have queen b1 check. Uh, um, and then there's bishop f1, but a, the a2 pawn is hanging uh, after a subsequent rook trade. So I think white has a choice to make here. Yeah, and rook c1 I'm very happy to see because now the d4 pawn is hanging. So the question is, can I take advantage? And that I don't know, because rook c8 would make rook c8 check would make white really really active. But I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna give up. I'm gonna be passive for a moment. Um, but I'm gonna have the two bishops, and I think those trumps count for something. If there's anything I know about chess, that's that. So I expect rook. Oh, rook c8 check was not played. Okay, this is this is so very surprising. Um, yeah, my a2 pawn is being hit. Um, I'm going to go rook d2. And the idea is if knight takes a5 is played, I have bishop d4. Uh, and I think that's a really, really annoying move for uh, for white to meet. Because now this f2 pawn is a really, really important uh, pawn. Um, and uh, yeah, knight... and. I just I think uh, I think I have enough now with the two bishops. It's a little bit unbalanced. There's no way to easily simplify everything, and I'm putting up I'm putting on some pressure. Yeah, and okay, knight c6 doesn't really solve the problem of that f2 uh, pawn, so I think I'm just going to take with check. And yeah, now I can even take another pawn if I want. Um, and I don't see why I can't take it, so I'm going to take it. So now I'm two pawns up with the two bishops. This should be a winning advantage. Um, yeah, okay. 
Nice try, but it doesn't do that much. And now I'm going to go bishop d4. The idea is just to attack the knight, but also to trade the rooks with rook a1. And yeah, this was my plan now. Now I have the two bishops. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that this position I can win. So now I'm going to go try to go f5 and then e5 and e4 just to cut out the g2 bishop. So that's my idea with that. But first let me just get my king involved. Just get, activating the king is important and it really doesn't hurt. Um, then just kicking this knight which has been a little bit annoying to my efforts. And these bishops are parked in the corner, but they're doing a really good job influencing the diagonals. Um, and this knight on d2 is really lacking squares. So I think everything is good. g4 is an interesting move, just sort of to get a, get a square for the, the e4 square for the... Um, uh, for the knight or the bishop, but I'm not going to allow that. I think I want to keep these central pawns together, and so I'm going to keep it like that. And bishop h3 is a bit of a cheeky move in that uh, it's sort of uh, if saying go e4, because if I go e4, I blunder. Um, but I'm going to go bishop d5 now, and now I'm threatening e4. Um, so I'm just, I just got to avoid a few more of the pitfalls and then I think I should be in the driver's seat. Just going, stepping out of the way so I can protect. And now I'm a little bit down on time, so I'm going to play a tad bit faster. So e4, king e5. I just need to march these pawns up the board. I'm very close. So e4, king e5. And now my king is two diagonals away from the knight, so there aren't any checks for a while. Knight checks for a while, which is a really, really welcome development. And now I'm pushing. And this should be the ball game. Woo! And I've won a game. Nice coordination with the bishops there at the end. Um, I don't think I had really any serious advantage in the opening. Um, sometimes the closest line, the strength of the closest line is it lulls you into a few bad moves. And I think I did make a few bad moves. Like bishop d7, maybe not bad, but it might be lazy. I mean, maybe I should be building on the queen side right away by playing rook b8 and b5. And I'm never really sure where the rook should go here, because I think I, if if they're delaying d4, I should put I should try and open this diagonal for my light, my dark scoring bishop, the a1 and the ha diagonal. So b, b5, b4 sort of falls into that plan. And maybe rook c8 doesn't help with that cause. So maybe rook b8 would have been better. Anyways, got to a position sort of around here, e5 break. He probably should have taken this d7 uh, bishop and uh, and gone and kept the two bishops advantage going somehow. Soon after, I got the two bishops and and then initiative, and that's not what you want to give me. Um, although I haven't really proven to be great at converting anything today, I was back in my wheelhouse a little bit, and um, and then you can see after the queen trade just how strong the two bishops are because. They really start to just rake up pawns and put pressure on the white pieces, the white pawns. So, and and then the knight really fell out of favor. It lost coordination on a5, and uh, I was able to get two pawns in the in this mess. And um, and that's two pawns with the two bishops is almost always a win. So, um, definitely, uh, definitely, definitely happy with that. So, anyways, um, that'll be all for today. Uh, thanks for checking it out, and. Um, yeah, I'll be back soon.